eight, child custody and equal parenting time. You know, this comes up a lot in my practice. People come in to see me and they tell me, well, I want joint custody. And I don't think that they realize there are two aspects to custody. There is the legal aspect of custody and is there is the physical aspect of custody. So the legal aspect of custody relates to who is making major decisions about the children. And normally major decisions relate to major decisions in the area of medicine, education, religion, and personal care. So personal care is kind of a newer thing that's come up. Personal care relates to like, for example, are you gonna let your kid get a tattoo or get a nose piercing or color their hair? Those are personal care decisions. So custody relates to major decisions in those areas. Custody does not relate to the day-to-day, -day, everyday decisions that you make when the child is in your care. So for example, say the kid comes over to see you, spend time with you, is feeling a little under the weather and you wanna give your child some Benadryl or children's Tylenol. If that's all your kid requires, then you don't need to have sole custody, sole legal custody to make that decision. However, say your child, a, a doctor says your child has a life-threatening illness and needs surgery, or that your child um, maybe needs to go to a specialized school or get specialized training. Those are major decisions. And if you share joint legal custody with the other parent, these are things you need to talk with the other parents about. If you have sole custody or sole legal decision-making in these areas, these are things that under the laws of your state, you probably have the right to make the call without getting the other parent's approval. Does it mean you still shouldn't talk to the other parent about it, but you should have final say to check the laws of your state always, always, always. So people often come in and they say, I want, you know, equal, equal custody or joint custody. And they don't realize that there's more to custody than just that legal aspect. There's also the parenting time aspect. And more often than not, when people come into me, they say that they want joint custody. They're referring to they want equal time or, or joint parenting time. So a person can have joint custody with the other parent, and it doesn't mean that they get equal parenting time. A person can have sole custody of the children and still share equal parenting time with the other parent. So, you know, joint custody doesn't necessarily mean equal parenting time. That's what I'm trying to get at. So when you are going through your case or if you're about to start your case, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that is most important to you? And maybe both things are important to you. Maybe you're very interested in sharing joint decision making over those major decisions and you want equal parenting time. Or... Maybe it's more important to you that you just have equal time with the kids and that you, you trust the other parent, you know, to make the best decisions for your children, or you don't feel like you necessarily need joint legal decision making. Don't get hung up on labels, especially if certain things aren't that important to you or you think the other parent and you might be on the same page when it comes to those major decisions. Sometimes what I find from my clients is they get really hung up on labels. You know, they say, I really want the joint custody. But when I examine them, what's more important to them is that they spend more time with their children. And when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it, that's what they want. And we're able to resolve cases in a way to achieve what their goals are. So think about what it is that you really want in your case. And think about what custody arrangement from a legal perspective, legal custody what is going to achieve that purpose, and also think about what parenting plan is going to achieve that purpose. And above all, remember that your kids come first. You know, and I decided to make that the recurring mantra of command the courtroom, kids come first, because I want you to remember that it's not about you. It's not about the other parent. It's about your children. Kids come first. So before you think about what's best for you or what's more convenient for you or what fits your schedule, Think about what best suits your kids, what is best for them, what is going to promote their growth and their well-being the most, because your kids come first. You know, there's something else I wanted to, to put out there for you guys to think about, you know, because a couple of things happened to me, good things, this week, and it just made me realize that we really need to look at what is present in our life to figure, uh, you know, and recognize what exists. We are all always wanting for more. You're wanting more time with your kids. You're wanting more decision-making power with your kids. You're wanting 
wanting, wanting, and it's not a bad thing to want. I mean, that's part of the human nature. But I think in all this wanting, we often forget about the fantastic things that we have in our lives. You know, recently I was interested in getting a book, but I have so many books. Like you see all the books behind me, right? I have tons of books. I love books, yet I often don't read all the books that I have. A lot of times I buy books and I don't read them. So many of these books I haven't read. It's really sad, but I do read a lot. So I wanted a new book. I ended up not buying the book, but I listened to the book on audio. Well, the other day I bought a new book and I've made this rule for myself. For every book that I buy, I'm going to donate one of the books that I have. So in looking through my books, I found that I had the book that I'd been wanting like a month or two ago. I already had it and I didn't realize that I had it. So I was thought, oh my gosh, like I really need to take a look at what's present in my life that I'm not recognizing. And this also happened to me when I was cleaning out my closet recently. And I, you know, I started out looking for something in my closet and then it evolved into me cleaning my closet out. And as I was cleaning it out, you know, I had some purses from, I mean, all the purses I've ever had in my life, you know, and I have them in bags and my closet organized. And I was taking these purses out of these fabric bags and realized how many beautiful, like unbelievable, gorgeous purses that I've collected over the years. I mean, some from 10, 12 years ago. I thought, my gosh, you know, I go to a store, I go to the mall and I look at these purses and I think I want, I want, I want, yet I'm not recognizing what I already have. So we can apply this in any part of our life. You think you want more with your children, be grateful for whatever it is that you have, if you have something with them. And there's a lot of people out there who don't have any time with their children and they're fighting for time. And I get you, I recognize that. The beautiful thing is that you do have children. There's many people out there who don't have children and want children. So what are the gifts you already have in your life that you can be grateful for and focus on those for a little bit, okay?